Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the re-release of the Monkey Mobile. It's an MPC kit in 125th scale, and it's kit number MPC 772. No skill level is given, but a moderate or intermediate builder could build this with no problems. It requires glue and paint, and it's seen several uh, releases over the years. At one time it was even released as uh, Fonzie's Dream Ride to promote Happy Days. Uh, so it, it has about 80 pieces molded in white, chrome, clear, and clear red with rubber tires and metal axles. Overall, it's a simple kit with a fairly well detailed motor, a basic suspension, nice interior, and correct looking body. The decals in, are included uh, in a gold color and there were multiple versions of the graphics used on the real cars. And these most represent the original style of car number one uh, in the promotional shots. Although the actual TV series, the car didn't have any graphics on it. When you're done, the overall length is about 9 inches long, 3 inches wide, and 2 and a quarter inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. And as we've mentioned, they only come in gold, but there's still some pretty nice graphics. And they follow the promotional uh, version pretty nicely. Before you begin, know that uh, we use Model Master's liquid cement for most of construction, although sometimes super glue is needed for strength or white glue for clear parts. Um, also, pay attention to the safety uh, use guidelines uh, for any of the products you see here uh, to make sure that uh, you are as safe as you can be when you're building your model. We start with the motor assembly, so prior to painting, you can assemble the block and add the timing cover and the heads and then paint this unit uh, a GM blue. The transmission is aluminum and on the oil pan uh, paint the starter black and the uh, oil filter white. The exhaust manifolds are steel color. So assemble the rest of the motor by adding the oil pan to the bottom, the intake to the top and the valve covers to the heads and distributor to the intake. Now add the exhaust manifolds last. Extensive details aren't needed on this motor because the hood doesn't open and once built it can only be seen from underneath so set this unit aside to dry. Assemble the blower unit uh, and it'll be set aside for later installation once uh, finished. Now paint the inner turbine housing gold and the butterfly panel flat black. Assemble the front and rear faces on the turbine housing and then assemble the snorkel halves and the butterfly panel. Now add this to the turbine and install the uh, whole unit in place onto the base and add the belt cover to that. Now add the radiator cap and the hose in place. Now grab the wheels and tires and uh, note that the rim backs have different sizes. Uh, the hub is a little bit longer and those are used on the rear. So paint the inside of the rim backs uh, flat black as well as the rim inside of the backside. The tires are non-directional and all the same size, so uh, location uh, is not important. Uh, but to give them a used road-worn look, um, press and roll the tread on a sheet of fine sandpaper, about a 220 grit, and insert uh, a rim front into the tire and insert a rim back onto the other side. And this complete the tires uh, so you can set those aside for later. So get these parts out for the interior assembly and uh, the tub and all the seats I painted tan like the original and the console will be black with shifter remaining chrome and then paint the outer part of the tub you know the bottom etc uh, flat black and note on the colors that console is black in car number one and tan in car number two from the TV series. I wanted to carpet my model so I used some of the carpet flocking available at craft stores or online uh, sifted it out and then uh, painted a little white glue on the bottom of the flooring and then you sprinkle it on after sifting it out and make sure it's all uh, loose and then tamp it down a little bit and then you tap off the excess and all of a sudden you've got a carpeted model floor. Once that's done you can install the back seat and all four of the bucket seats and then add the console and the shifter to the floor pan and paint the gas pedal black. Now grab these parts to detail the dash and I painted my dash black to replicate car number one. If you build car two, um, the top pad on the dash is tan. And then the instrument panel is painted a uh, wood tone uh, and the 
and the trim and the knobs are painted silver with black highlights on the panel. Then the column is tan with silver spokes and wood colored wheel. Car number two has a tan wheel. The instrument cluster uh, has black faces and white details. Also note that there are air conditioning vents on the dash there. Uh, so for car number one, remove the vents as it did not have air conditioning. To finish this up, uh, install the uh, instrument cluster from the back side, add the tachometer to the top of the dash, and the gauges to the dash's bottom. Install the uh, dashboard into the slots on the side walls, and then add the steering wheel into place, and set this aside to dry thoroughly. Get these parts out to start the chassis, and paint the chassis pan flat black and the frame rails a semi-gloss black. I painted the gas tank steel color, and there are other lines and details that you can highlight for more detailing if you choose. Now assemble the rear axle and paint it black, and the exhausts are steel with silver mufflers, and attach the exhaust into place on the chassis pan. Then add the rear axle, making sure the drive shaft is under the support bar. Now we can grab some of the previous assemblies to finish the chassis. Slide the metal axle through the rear axle uh, openings and then attach the wheels. Remember the longer wheel back hubs go to the rear of the car and then slide the second metal axle through the holes in the front suspension and attach the tires there. Here's a view of the unit and it, with the motor attached in place on the motor mounts and now we have something to build the rest of our model on. We'll start on the bodywork now and grab these pieces to begin there. Uh, there is some assembly that needs to be done prior to paint so the front and rear valances can be installed onto the body and then uh, in the front fenders the exhaust mounts need to be installed there. Then the roof can be assembled at this point too. Once you've installed the uh, valances etc there, uh, we'll need to do some cleanup on the parts. On the windshield frame the A-pillar is removed. Now note the excessive flash around the body panels that need to be trimmed with a hobby knife and cleaned up with some light sandpaper. Wet sand the entire body with some 800 grit sandpaper and, and clean it up nicely looking for any blemishes that need attention. And use your favorite putty if you find any sinks etc. I didn't find any on mine, uh, just some parting lines that had to be removed. Then prime the whole body with a good quality sealer primer and wet sand that again with some 800 paper to prepare it for the main color. The roof and the parachute can be painted tan to match the interior. Then set these aside to dry and wait for attachment later on. As you can see it's a pretty long convertible top and it really sets off the model. So uh, pay a little attention to this to make sure that you do a good job uh, cleaning it up and painting it up. Now go ahead and uh, paint your car uh, the um, color of your choice. Uh, I used what was called a GM Victory Red um, for this car um, and, the, and the, of course the original was a very very similar uh, red color. And then we can move on to the decals uh, once that's dry. Now these decals are pretty large. I recommend that you use some setting solution from the aftermarket to make sure that they stick to the body and follow any of the contours and the door panels etc. Now you can uh, highlight any of the trim on the car that needs to be uh, highlighted. I used uh, what's called foil, uh, adhesive foil, and it's like tape. You just cut little strips off and apply them to the areas where the trim are on the vehicle. And then you use a, a brand new hobby knife uh, blade to trim that off uh, of any of the excess. Then rub it down and burnish it in so it really looks pretty nice, almost just like real trim on a real car. Once the trim is in place and uh, looks uh, good, you can go ahead and uh, spray a clear coat over the entire thing with the decals and the foil in order to seal them into place. I wanted a little more authenticism for my vehicle, so I found uh, a California plate on the internet and I printed it out to, to size on uh, plain paper with an inkjet color printer and then I covered it up with a little piece of uh, cellophane tape to uh, make sure that it was resistant to uh, any anything and had a little sheen and then I'm going to glue that into place uh, on the back end with the rest of the parts to finish up the uh, rear section. 
So go ahead and assemble the rear end and add the tail lights into place. Then add the parachute to the slot in the body. Cut and fit your license tag and add that uh, with a little white glue. And then add uh, the gas cap to the top of the trunk. Now we can work on the front and about the only thing to add here are the grills. I detailed the grills with uh, uh, what we call a black wash. It's 50-50 uh, flat black with a thinner and those, that goes into the inserts, uh, insets there and kind of re uh, reveals some of the highlighted chrome for the grid. Um, and you can just wipe that portion off with your finger to make sure it shows through. Now the fog lights and the headlights uh, uh, for them I use some white glue uh, to make a clear film to kind of create a lens over the chrome. Then um, install the grills into place. To get a nice uh, crisp clear look I dip my uh, windshield glass uh, into some uh, future floor care. Um, that's a floor wax in a liquid form and you just wick it off and then let it dry and it, it makes a much uh, cleaner look. Now add the mirror to your uh, uh, car, uh, the, the top of the car at the windshield there and then glue it into place using some of that white glue. It'll dry clear so that it doesn't uh, diminish the look of your window. Now slide the in interior into place from the top side of the body starting at about a 45 degree angle in front and then slide it right into place. Uh, it fits tight and you probably won't need any glue here. Now do some test fitting to find out where the chassis will contact uh, the interior there, the interior tub up inside and then uh, use some good uh, glue, maybe some epoxy to uh, make sure that uh, when you place that into position that uh, it's glued uh, rigidly to the uh, to the rest of the body uh, to stay in place. So go ahead and uh, insert that now. Uh, usually uh, the uh, rear of the uh, mo model and then uh, at an angle just kind of slide it down spread the sides out until she drops into place. Now here's some uh, some of the fun parts. Uh, where the final assembly of the engine and the exhaust can be done now so uh, just uh, scrape off any chrome where there's contact points for the glue and then go ahead and glue the blower into place on the top of the hood there and then also uh, grab uh, the exhaust pipes, there's four on each side, and glue those into place in the holes of the recess that you uh, installed in the front fenders. Now's a good time to add those side windows. Uh, we didn't uh, put those in place as the instructions said earlier to make sure that they don't get uh, broken off because they're pretty fragile uh, just hanging out there off of that pillar. Now the roof uh, can just be uh, set into place and into position. Uh, you don't need to glue it on just uh, so that it's removable and you can see the interior whenever you like. Now this was a real styling uh, <laughs> coup d'etat back in the day uh, converting this old uh, Pontiac into the show car with uh, four bucket seats and a rear deck. <laughs> um, it was a big hit for the show and it's still an icon to build. Uh, it looks great on your shelf and you'll get a lot of comments on it. But here's uh, both the front and the rear uh, of the vehicle as, uh, as it's finished and it certainly is uh, something different. So here are the parts that are left over. Um, there's just a few pieces, a couple decals and uh, the kit comes with a little key ring uh, fob that you can add uh, in case you have uh, a monkey mobile. Well, there you have it. Uh, let's face it, this is just one cool looking model. Uh, it belongs in anybody's display. Uh, the, the model itself has a pretty simplistic motor, uh, but you don't see it except for underneath, so uh, that's okay. The interior and the chassis are pretty well detailed, however, and that's what shows up. So spend a little extra time on that and you'll have a great looking display for your uh, collection. Um, but this is an icon, so uh, if, if you can find one, and, and they're pretty plentiful, um, I would put one and, uh, on my shelf uh, and display it proudly. We hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks.